Welcome back to Horizon Zero Dawn spoiler talk, where we spoil Horizon Zero Dawn. And talk about it. And spoil it. Let's spoil it. Wow, that Zero Dawn sure was a horizon. I like the part when the horizon Zero Dawned. I saw at least one Dawn, though, in that game, so that is a very false title. And a few horizons, if you would. So... I guess for the people who maybe don't know, um, who are listening, who or just, you know, they listen through and they're like, you know, I don't, I'm not going to play this game uh, or anything. So let's kind of explain what, uh, what Horizon is and what Zero Dawn is, and what Horizon Zero, Zero Dawn is. It is a video game from Guerrilla Games, the makers of Killzone. It is an open world, like, RPG meets Far Cry with uh, robot dinosaurs and maybe the best graphics ever definitely on a console game definitely on a console game i mean there is the order 1886 but i feel like the scale on this gives it an edge yeah, yeah agreed and the colors yeah so did and you the horizons get... so when you guys played it do you guys do either of you guys have the ps4 pro i do oh yeah do you guys have hdr on your tv Oh yeah. I do not, but I have 4K. Okay, so I played it on just like a regular I I played it on my like 10-year-old plasma 1080p. Uh and it, I I I thought it even even on that it, it, on a on an OG PS4 and it still looked kind of amazing. Yeah, you know, I saw I'm going to talk about something I saw on YouTube. I saw a uh, top 10 list on YouTube. I think it was from Watch Mojo of the best graphics of all time. And they didn't have Horizon in that list. I was very disappointed. But they had Mario Kart 8. And it wasn't like they specifically said this is for technical reasons, not not like Art stylistically. Style. Yeah, this is just graphics. I was upset. It made me mad. I didn't leave a comment. Good, I felt don't, like enough, enough people did. Don't comment on YouTube videos. When you start doing that, you're going down a bad path. For once you start down the dark path forever, will it dominate your destiny? Exactly. Consume you at will, as it did Obi-Wan's Apprentice. Anakin commented on YouTube videos. Oh, I bet he did. Uh, he went around trying to watch all the videos on sand, and he was like, thumbs down, this is about sand. Oh, man. Anyway, but so, so um, it, they don't really explain early on, you know, why it's called Horizon Zero Dawn. But kind of as you, it, it, it takes place on an Earth that is that is kind of like moved on a it's, little bit. Yeah, it's post-apocalyptic. You can you see you you like are running around the ruins of old cities, and yet there are robot dinosaurs around. And the, the story of the game is basically the story of what happened so and you where to you the came point from. Where it's supposed to, yeah, exactly. But it it, it takes its time. It, it takes probably like. A good ten hours or fifteen hours before they you even hear the mention of Zero Dawn or Horizon. Yeah. So basically, the underlying premise is that there was this military contractor who, in order to make machines better and kind of like able to produce them more efficiently, uh, created this bad code. He created Skynet, but worse. And basically uh, allowed these machines to commute or to consume organic life, and specific, and I think specifically like, um, I like it's just meat. organic material, just any organic material, yeah, tree, trees, people, dirt. and, and well, dirt's not organic. Sure, it is. Uh, anyway. So, but so, and then it would use those to kind of create these to create more machines. And so they worked, so they got this big project together, and that was Project Horizon to try and figure out what to do with this. Um, and the Zero Dawn comes in because Zero Dawn was going to be the first, uh, the first day without human life on planet earth so that's what zero dawn comes in and so they had like a they had like a couple of competing things where basically 
One was they would give, they told people that they were going to be fighting back against the machines and doing all this stuff. Uh, but it, it turns out that that was basically just a smoke screen. Uh, and they would have to do the, they would have to do something to essentially reseed the entire planet um, with uh, organic material and start life over again as, um, as it, as it was prior to the fall. Well, I mean, and you were said that they were telling people that they were going to fight back, but they weren't, but they were actually fighting. So people were fight, fighting just to buy them time. Like right. you will go into like installations where you see like a whole bunch of dead robots, like giant ones. And it's pretty cool. So, I mean, we're kind of going on about the story, but, and, and basically uh, as you go through the story and uh, as you explore the world, as you explore the world, you find these things that are called cauldrons and they're basically like dungeons. A little, they're kind of like mini dungeons. They don't take very long. They, I think they, the longest one took me maybe about 20 minutes. I don't know if that sounds right to you guys. That yeah, kind of sounds, but I don't, I honestly, that game, I just lost track of time when I was playing it. So I, I don't know how long anything took. I think the longest cauldron for me was the one that had been open and was overrun with vegetation. Yeah. Oh, with all the humans? Yeah. The shortest one was the one where you just go in and fight the uh, what's it called? The first, T-Rex. like the first one. No. Oh, oh, the, t- the yeah, th- yeah, the yeah, yeah. That one was real thunder quick. Jaw. Yeah, because yeah, it was just the thunder jaw. That's yeah. It. That one was that one was real easy. Um. Yeah. So, but yeah, what you kind of find out is that these these cauldrons were were part of were part of Project Horizon, and like they would they kind of held different aspects. Uh, like creation, because they, yeah. they they wanted they wanted they wanted to create these uh, they wanted to create robots that would that would help uh, facilitate the the reseeding. Well, not just reseeding, like terraforming, because the planet wasn't hospitable anymore. Like they couldn't survive the atmosphere of the Earth. Right. So they made all these machines, and they designed them to look like animals. Because reasons, I forget why they said they said it in one of the uh, the journals or something that you find audio logs maybe. Yeah, and there's there's that that stuff is just kind of like scattered all over. But um, I guess the kind of the main crux of the story, that kind of the antagonism, is that one of the cores. Do you remember what the name of that core was? Hades? It wasn't like Hades. Hades. Yeah, yeah, Hades. Hades. Yeah, so a lot of them had like different, different like Greek and Roman god names, and one of them was Hades. So basically, Hades was there in case whatever the propagation messed up, Hades would wipe the site clean again. But like Hades got disconnected from everything else, kind of became, kind of started running on its own, and it just so it didn't have any. There were no functions of any of the other systems to kind of override it. So it just kept trying to wipe out everything. And like it actually started to center on uh, Aloy, who's the protagonist of the of the game. And that's because Aloy was a, basically a clone of the main scientist that came up with the whole project. Yeah, Dr. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Sobek. Yes. So she could actually enter all these old facilities because the the uh, security systems recognized her. Yeah, and then you find out later on that that uh, so there there was this large AI, or not large, well, but everything was kind of connected into this one central AI called Gaia, and the thought process behind that was that you know Gaia would kind of oversee these different functions, and and that was really driven by uh, Doctor Sobek. Um, and so finally at a certain point, Gaia realizes that, Hey, Hades has gone rogue and has been disconnected. So therefore, uh, in order, the only thing that I can now think to do is to take the genetic material of the one person who would know what to do and put it back out into the world. And that's how, and like you go through the whole thing and it's, it's very, um, like the the world you enter into, the society is very primitive and is very kind of religious. Yeah, 
Like Aloy was an outcast because she was found in the cave. And... The cave being the entrance to this research facility. So they thought she was cursed or something. We haven't even mentioned the other guy though. Oh, Silence. Silence. Yeah, the guy from The Wire. Lieutenant Daniels. Or from Lost. Or from Fringe. Or from like a million other things. Or from Destiny. Yeah, or, yeah, Destiny. or Destiny, yeah. yeah. He shows up and starts helping Aloy. And you can kind of tell from the beginning that he's hiding something from you. But it turns out that he found Hades, right? Yeah. I think he's he the reason Hades. why it happened. Yeah. Well, he, yeah, he found Hades. And like there's this whole corner uh like segment of this society of this kind of fledgling civ human civilization that worships hades as a god like the ai hades as a as a god yeah what are they called the shadow karja yeah correct yeah so he found hades and hades was giving him all this information because he liked to learn so he had like the uh focus as aloy called it that which is communicate this... Yeah, which is just this little thing that you could put on, like, near your ear. Like, you would, you would attach it to the side of your head, and you could... That's kind of how you get your Batman detective vision. Yeah. Uh, yeah, how you research all the different dinosaurs, find their weak points, and you can communicate over large distances with it. Which is what led the Shadow Karja to find out about Aloy, and also they used it when they attacked her, her um, village. Which is uh, pretty early in the game, probably like four hours in or something. Uh, if that Maybe less than that, like that's at the that's at the very very beginning. Uh, like in the um, that's at the uh, what you call it the the proving, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's, yeah, but there are quests and stuff you do before the proving. I didn't take very much time with that. I and you kind of you go around to some of these different factions. And you, I mean, there's there's kind of a whole bunch of different stuff that you can do in the game. There are different tasks and, and missions. There, there are a ton of collectibles you can look for and to find. There are a ton of collectibles. Like, I actually went through and got all of the collectibles. Oh, you I, did? All the, like, audio logs and stuff? No, no, not all that stuff, because that stuff, oh, doesn't, okay. mark, that stuff doesn't mark on your map. No, but, like, it doesn't. The, the, um... The mugs, so there are these, like, they call them ancient vessels, but you can you find them, like, all over the place. There are these Banuk figures, which are the, just these, the Banuk are these, or they're a different tribe, basically. Um, I'm trying to think of what some of the other, there are these vantages. Or the flowers, the metal yeah, the flowers. Metal flowers. flowers, yeah. I liked the guy who wanted you to get the, the coffee mugs. Because he had theories of what they were oh, used yeah, for. Oh, yeah, what they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the theory? Like, he thought they were used for shaving? Or so, yeah, something. I I don't remember, but I remember I, I was cracking up a bit when, when they had him say that stuff, yeah. Yeah, I like that that guy. I, I, didn't, I don't think I collected any of that stuff. Yeah, I, I did wind up platinuming the game. I got close. I hear I should have went and got that armor. The, it was uh, good the, armor. The hunting quest, hunting lodge armor. Oh, that no, you get weapons uh, from that. Yeah, What's the one that gives you like the electric? That armor? is the the ancient the shield weaver. Yeah, yeah you have, have to that. find like I the never, pieces. I yeah. never did that. So one of those bugged out for me, and I can I couldn't pick it up. I couldn't get it, and that was like the last major thing. And then I had to do the. One trophy for knock over the twenty three grazers, and at a certain point, I was like, "Well, if I'm not going to get this one, I'm not going to worry about the others." In case you guys can't tell, we all like the game. Yeah, yeah I, a lot. I dropped, I dropped probably about sixty hours into it. Um, I'm not sure I, what I did, maybe like forty. I so I put about I think I'm approaching like forty or fifty hours into the Legend of the Zelda, and the reason I bring that up is that. A lot of people have kind of compared the two, which I don't think is a really good comparison. But a lot of people seem to like well, Zelda I, more. I think it's just because they both came out same time frame, both big first party open world RPGs. Yeah, um, but what I, where I was going to go with that was that I actually like this better than The Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. I respect that. 
Yeah, I've I've heard similar. A, a big reason behind is because Horizon is so unique in a way and all that. Where it's you know Zelda is fantastic as it is. It's still just kind of another Zelda in the end. You know. That's kind of different because it's more open world than other Zeldas have been. But it's still a Zelda. It is still like a Zelda. it's still your Link. You still have to fight Ganon. You know. Or this, like, I love, like, learning about everything and seeing everything and, like, going to all the different environments. And and that was actually one of the fun things I had uh, in, in, like, the earlier part of the game was was trying to figure out where I was. Like, where where is this game taking place? Oh, yeah. Did you, and, did you figure it out ever? Oh, yeah, I figured it out before. Uh, I had a hunch. I was like, I think it's somewhere around here. And then one of the vantages uh, says, and I was like, yes, called it, called yeah. it. Yeah, so, well, California, right? Denver. Colorado. Oh, Colorado, okay. Yep. You're up in the Rockies, and then you go down into, like, Utah and stuff. And, Durango. Yeah. Although I'm still not positive, and I meant to keep meaning to look up, where the hell is that jungle supposed to be? Well, this is thousands what? of years in the future. I well, guess I don't think after it's... the Earth I don't, has I don't... been terraformed. I don't think it's thousands of years, but I think it's no, a it, few hundred. I mean, no, yeah, I maybe not that. It, yeah, it's a, I think they say thousands. Did, no, 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 no. Isn't it a few hundred? Because, I think it's, hmm, yeah, it's something. Either way, it's far future. Far, but not so far. But anyway, but yeah, it's now. I mean, this is one of the, this is easily one of the best games that I've played this year. I think so far, this is probably like my game of the generation. Uh, yeah, okay. so far, for sure. For sure. It's really good. Um, I would definitely recommend... Uh, so wait, wanna... you, you like this more than Knack? Yeah, yeah, probably. Well, Knack 2 is not out yet, so, you know. Yeah, well, yeah, so well, on Horizon Zero Dawn 2 is not out yet. Hopefully they... You know, that's, oh, a, that's a thing. That's happening. That's I think the... they said they were working on some story DLC. I I could go for that. Like, yeah. that's the thing. It's like, they they definitely left it in a place where... I if they if they decided you know what we've told the story we're done with it I would be one hundred and ten percent on board with that. Would you want to play as Aloy again, or would you hope that it's like in a different like on a different continent? Well, then they'd have to say that you know these this other nation did the well, same no, thing. They, well, I mean they could have it different. There's no way they could have it in the same way of the where everything takes place like that that main hub because that's there was the like one guy hub is kind of my understanding but i mean you could play as like a tribe somewhere else but not have that whole part of it i guess or aloy gets on one of the flying dinosaurs and flies someplace that actually that's another thing just really quick about those i because you know i watched a fair amount of the trailers and stuff beforehand and I was surprised by how many of those I had not seen. Like, how many there were in total. And then I was like, oh, there's there's a few a few more of these. Huh. Yeah, well, I mean, some of that stuff could have been, like, really early concept stuff. That just, they cut for whatever reason. You know, when I first started the game, I was wondering if I was going to like using a bow and arrow throughout the entire game. Or if it yes. would get repetitive. But I did. It was real fun. Yeah, everything about the way that the, the, the moment-to-moment gameplay was always really solid. And it never got too easy. Like, you could still, even at the very end, maxed out, if you fucked up and got in some bad situations, still very easily get killed. Yeah, there's a point where you can get knocked down, and then as you're getting up, you get knocked down again. Those things coming from underground? Oh, yeah. God, those the rock breakers, those are, yeah. those are the worst. Yeah, like I said... End of the game, best equipment, best armor, like all that stuff. Still not easy to take down. Like, still very troublesome. And I like that, like a lot. Yeah, it's great. What did you think of like some of the different? Uh, so like, there, because there there were different things like um, clearing out the corruption zones, doing the bandit camps, uh, and th- things like that. As far as the, would you like? If they if they did add something, would you want them to add like a different type of activity, or like how would you? Because I, I definitely think they would. It, 
like uh, I, I think that you know after about sixty hours, I feel like they need to either change something up a little bit, or they need or to add, yeah yeah I, I just will add say, something yeah because they didn't have that big a variance in side quests. Yeah, I noticed that a lot of the side quests seem to be go here, use detective vision, follow footprints to go here, and then you use detective vision to find new footprints, and then you follow it here, and then you have to fight a dinosaur. That's what or, a lot of the side quests seem to be. Or or fight this group of people. Yeah, or fight the bandits. Yeah. Or well, yeah. it, like there was there was the stuff with Aaron when you were tracking down the people who killed his sister. Oh uh, yeah, but that was kind of a main story thing. That wasn't a side yeah, quest. Yeah, that wasn't a side quest. Also, did you guys ever override the dinosaurs to fight one another? Oh yeah. Uh, so there was one of the. There was one of the uh, the the one we call it, the hunting grounds where you had to do that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Oh yes, that one. That I took a couple of tries getting that one to kill the Thunderjaw. Yeah, with the uh, scrappers. Yeah, no, not scra- um. What were it? either way, Ravagers? whatever they were called. Yeah, I think that's it. Ravagers. But... So that was the other thing that was really cool. Is like some like I didn't really understand until I did that, and I did that before I progressed really far in the story was that there were different, like how important it was to sort of shoot off the, some of the, the weapons of the, of the machines and use them against them. Yes. Oh yeah. That became my go-to strategy. Especially with the Thunder Jaws, you could take those disc launchers and you could just start wrecking the house. For oh, the, yeah. the last, did you guys finish the hunting quests? Like, get that all not. done. Now, uh, the end of that, you fight, like, a Mega Thunderjaw kind of deal. The, what, what the, was the it? Red Jaw? Yeah, oh, um, Red Maw. Oh, Red, yeah. Red Maw. I did Maw. do that. I did do Red Maw. And that came in quite useful doing that during that, because that thing was a bit tough. Well, I was the, also using the uh, the rope. Is it the rope caster? The yes. thing that ties them down to the ground? Yep. I didn't use I, that for the flying ones. I, I didn't use that very often. I use that for everything because it just pin, pinned them down and let you focus things more easy, a lot, a lot easier. A lot of times, though, it would take, oh, for the big things, it would take a lot of ropes to tie them down. Yeah. And then a lot of time what they'll do is they'll just back up and try, and they'll be pulling out the ropes so they're not really focusing on you anymore. So then you can just focus what you want and you get that disc launcher. Yeah, all in all, I think really, really good game. Uh, I think one of the things that I was going to bring up was... Oh, shoot, now I forget. Right now, I'd say it's either one or two so far for my game of the year. But it's still pretty early in the year. The other right. one being Resident Evil 7. I really like Resident Evil 7. I still need to beat that, actually. But I... The one... I just, like... The the other great thing was just the varying environments. It was just really nice as well. Like going from the desert to the mountains to the jungle. And then just, like all over to the forests and you know Mm -hmm. and they had the different wildlife in each one oh did you guys how did you guys ever get the uh the golden fast travel and how soon did you get that well that's the one where it's like you could use it to do however many you didn't have to keep collecting the fast travel packs i just yes i did collecting them i got that pretty early on that helped a lot I never really had a problem running out of the fast travel packs. Well, it was just one of those things. I saw that and I was like, "Okay, I need to. I need to get this stuff for this." Um, there was. Ne- I never had uh, too much of a problem with, like, overall of running out of materials. Like, I would definitely get in like little pinches where it's like, "Oh man, I could really use some more healing stuff right now." Uh, yeah. The wire. Yeah. I was having an issue with the wire for a while. I was using the rope caster so much, and that uses a lot of wire. Right. Yep. Yeah, no, for that, I got close a couple of times, I know. But that was mainly because I just kind of stopped looting because I was like, oh, my inventory is, like, full. So I don't want to pick any more stuff up. I definitely stopped picking up uh, sticks or the wood for arrows and stuff because definitely at a certain point. like, Like, I wound up with... All of the best gear, like I like fail, like before I really started making too much progress in the story. Like I, I roamed around and did 
a lot of the side missions and did cleared out the bandit camps and did i think all but one of the corruption zones and was collecting all of the extra stuff mm-hmm. and expanding expanding your backpack and your 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 inventory space oh yeah oh yeah were you using all the shadow karja uh, gear yeah by the end of it yeah uh with the exception of i think i was using the uh whatchamacallit um or the the stuff you get for completing the hunter stuff yeah those okay. were those were very good definitely worth going through that i mean plus it was like a, a fun fun little storyline yeah I, I liked it uh, and then i think i wound up as far as my outfit i used the stealth nora outfit i did I that for a while one, i used the one that was good against melee attacks i think because i i don't i don't remember having an issue with range i will say i do wish for the outfits that i could have taken off some of those headpieces are you th- they look too goofy for you a couple of times i was like ah, i i just just don't want anything on her head right now like the rest of it's fine but yeah it looks looks a little goofy i think we can probably wrap up soon all right yeah uh i don't think i have anything else to add other than i think everybody should play the game yeah if you have a ps4 get it how do you feel about the far cry comparisons I understand them. I see what they are. I mean, it makes sense to a point, yeah. Like the skinning kind of deal, you know, to make the bigger pouches and all that. You yeah. know, yeah, definitely. But that's kind of, in my mind, where it ends. I, I feel like they started with Far Cry, and then they built upon it, so it's actually so much better. Oh, it's a lot deeper. Yeah. like the, Yeah, there are, like, big towns in this. Like, cities. Well, a city. And then smaller villages. Yeah, that's one thing I hope in the sequel they have is more like cities. Yeah, I for the sequel, I just I don't know what uh, what I'd even want from it. But I mean, part of me almost wants because it's the kill zone guys. Part of me almost wants to have them do like a uh, just little standalone prequel DLC first person shooter thing. You know, a uh, prequel where you're during the during like, these apocalypse. robots come in. Yeah, yeah. Where you're fighting them, trying to buy time for the it, research. Yeah, exactly. Scientists. Something like that. And it just jumps around all these different places, you know? Yeah. I think that'd be cool, but... Yeah, no, very... Very interesting. Maybe they make it like an anthology game, where it's like Horizon something else, and it has nothing to do with robot dinosaurs, and it's just another like big open-world RPG with a different sci-fi setting. No. No, well, no, maybe. I, I, I don't know. See, I don't know what I'd want from it. You know, because this was so good. I Part of me just wants more of this, but what more do I want from it? Because it wraps up... You know, it, you know there's still, obviously, it, it it's going to pick up where it ended. You know? I was reading like stuff in the game. I was finding like journal entries and stuff about how pe- there was a colony on the moon. Oh, really? Yeah. Did you guys find that stuff? Uh, I don't no, recall that colony. one, no. Did you I imagine mean, having people come back? That's what I was thinking. People could come back with all their super advanced technology. And they're like, okay, it seems safe down here now that Hades is dealt with. Or is he? But it, that, yeah. they wouldn't even have a way... Because essentially what happens in the game is the Earth gets barren. The Earth goes barren. There's no life at all on it. Life itself is extinguished. So they wouldn't really know about Hades. They would just see the well, Earth I bear. assume they had... I There's some sort of signature. Yeah, or radio communication. Because they, they had super advanced technology, so they could have been like, hey, the Earth is it was being wiped out. You guys just stay up there. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. And then they, there's like radio communication that they intercepted, or there was a radio signal from Hades that suddenly went down, and they're like, hey, we can go back now. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I could have sworn I read something about a moon base. I mean, you definitely might have. There are so many like little text logs. Like, thank God that wasn't part of the Platinum. You don't need to collect all those to get the Platinum. Because there's like yeah. 100 of them. Yeah, and they're just randomly scattered throughout. Like when you're in Denver, Colorado Springs, and all the, you know, there's all the, the old skyscrapers torn down. There's like every random building around maybe has one in it. But yeah, just exploring was also just so fun. All right, is that is that it? Yeah. Yep, I think we'll call it. A plus. Right, thanks for listening.
do all that stuff, Doc, as you said, and the outro you heard before this. Thanks for listening.